Now, there's been an attack on a village in Kenya's coastal county, Lamu. A number of houses have been torched and police were robbed of their weapons. It's the latest in a series of attacks in the region that's forced many people to seek safety elsewhere. Catherine Soy is there for us now. And Catherine, this must be a, a terrifying experience for the people that you've been talking to. Absolutely. Uh, we found a woman here who was uh, fleeing, saying that she can't stay here another night. It was too scary last night. Now, what happened here in Pandangua, which is about uh, 60 kilometers from Peketoni, where 60, more than 60 people were killed uh, last month, is that this men, uh, many of them, we are told, uh, came here. It seems that they were looking for supplies. Uh, they came to this school. They banned uh, this classroom behind me. They also banned several houses as well. Um, they, they stole food from the school store, they stole medicine and medical supplies from the village dispensary, and yes, they stole six uh, firearms from home guards who were protecting the civilians. Now, police and military are pursuing uh, these attackers. Uh, there's certainly more boots on the ground. The military has been deployed, different police units as well. They've, been, they've launched a massive security operations here in Lamu County. They've been uh, navigating the thick forests looking uh, for this attack as the government has said that this was politically navigated uh, this was politically motivated I beg your pardon um, what's happening as well is that people are still fearful that yes there are more boots on the ground uh, the government uh, the government is being felt its presence is being felt but people are still fearful naturally and they're fleeing from their homes Priscilla Wagodia's husband and 12-year-old son were shot at point-blank range. She watched helplessly. The gunmen then burned part of her house. Thirteen men were killed that night in her town, Hindi, along the Kenyan coast. Another nine in a neighboring county. They asked for the sex of my baby. I told them a girl. They wouldn't believe me, so they made me strip her to make sure. A neighbor who came to help them had his hands and legs tied, his throat slit, right here. Every night since then, frightened people in Hindi have left their homes and farms. They come to this prison facility in the town center to spend the night. There are as many as 3,000 people. Most of them are women and children. More are coming. The government has been trying to convince the people here that it's safe to go back home, but they seem to have lost confidence in those assurances. They say they'd rather stay here than go back to their villages, possibly to more attacks. Their fears have only been increased by leaflets that have been circulated that warn people who are not originally from the area to leave. The message also applies to Christians. It means that it's likely this prison will have to accommodate even more frightened families. We have deployed our members of staff here. At the same time, we are, we are, we are manning the prison itself, provide security, and the staff line at, uh, as a whole. So to us also, we are, we are stretched also. The attack in Hindi took place barely a month after another in the nearby town of Mpeketoni. At least 60 people there were killed. The group Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility for these attacks, but the Kenyan government has accused local political networks. The government tells us it's safe to go home, but they haven't arrested everyone. These attackers are still out there and can strike at us. And so early morning they're given back their national identity cards and forced to leave the prison compound. They'll only be allowed back at night. They get no meals here. Surely, uh, these people have been getting uh, some food from the government, I must say. The government has been providing dry foods, uh, rice, oil, uh, maize flour as well. But the problem is that their numbers keep increasing and uh, the Red Cross that is distributing the food uh, says that the food is really not enough for all these people. So they have to reduce portions so that at least as many people as, uh, as, many people as possible get the food, even if it's a little food. Catherine, thanks very much indeed for that. Catherine Sawyer reporting from Pandango there.